Now let's focus on some of the differences between the adjusting entries and the normal day-to-day -day input entries. The normal day-to-day -day input entries are usually done not with a journal entry, but with the use of the forms, the forms being designed to make the data input as easy as possible, as well to have the connection of those forms so that we can communicate with the people we're doing business with, customers, vendors, and employees. So the general rule for the normal day-to-day -day stuff is, if there's a form that I can do the data input with, I'm going to use the form rather than a journal entry. If there is no form, then I'm going to think is cash affected and I'll use typically a deposit or check or expense form. And if that's not the case, only then do I default to entering just a journal entry. Now note that all of these forms, except the things that aren't actual entering a transaction, like an estimate, for example, or a purchase order, all of the forms enter a journal entry into the system, but they do so with the with these data input forms. With the period end adjustments, we're gonna be doing all of them with journal entries. So we could do the journal entries using the register, if it's a fairly easy with only like two accounts affected adjusting entry, but we're gonna be using journal entry forms uh, to do all of them. Also, obviously all the other data input forms are happening as they happen in real time, whereas the adjusting entries are only gonna happen at the end of the period. In our case, we're gonna do them just for the end of February here, so we're gonna imagine we need to do our financials just for the end of February. Obviously, normally you would, only, you would be doing adjusting entries either on a monthly basis or possibly just at the end of the year, uh, December for most small businesses or most companies in order to do taxes or financial reporting on the yearly basis. But we have two months of data input, so our cutoff date is gonna be uh, 228 will be the cutoff date uh, for us. So all of the adjusting entries will be entered as of that point in time. That means that they're not gonna be, the, the financial statements were not even designing or looking to be perfectly on say the accrual basis method or whatever basis we're looking at for the entire period, we're gonna recognize that it's not going to be perfect on say 222 or 223 or 225, February 25th, for example, because we're, but we're gonna, we're gonna sacrifice that to make the ease of the data input as easy as possible and then get the financial statements correct when we need them for reporting purposes and tax purposes at the end of the period, in our case, 228. Now, another difference usually is that a classical adjusting entry will usually not involve cash. Cash has been dealt with because we entered the cash transactions and we did the bank reconciliations. So cash is usually good. It's usually a timing issue with the adjusting entry. So one, cash isn't affected, which is a big difference than many other kind of transactions. And two, there's usually a balance sheet account and an income statement account affected. Now that's not always gonna be the case, but a classical adjusting entry, that is the case. It's a timing difference and therefore there's usually gonna be a balance sheet and an income statement account affected. So those are the general rules. Adjusting entry is gonna be entered with a journal entry instead of a form. Adjusting entries are gonna be entered as of the end of the period. And adjusting entries usually have a balance sheet and an income statement account, at least one of those Two, they might have more accounts involved, but that's not always the case as we will see here, but that's a general rule. Now then we're also gonna have the concept of reversing entries. Now, so the reversing entries are gonna be entries that we enter the day after the end of the period. In our case, February 28th, the day after is gonna be the first period of the next, the first day of the next period which is uh, March 1st in our case, or if you're doing December year end, December 31st, you reverse it's the reversing entries in uh, January. Now, the, the only reversing entries we would make are for entries that were temporary in, in nature. So, so if there's a permanent adjusting entry we entered, like a depreciation, for example, we typically wouldn't reverse that. But if there's some kind of temporary difference, it's a timing difference, and we're trying to say, hey, look, the accounting process is doing great the way they have it. I don't wanna mess up their system, such as with payroll, for example. Payroll's complicated enough. They're gonna use whatever system they have, entering payroll every two weeks or every month or every week, whatever they do. I'm gonna have to adjust it to fit into the period end 
uh, for adjusting entries, but I don't want to mess up the payroll because whatever system they're on is good. So I'm going to have to reverse it as of the first day of the next period. That's the general idea. And again, the idea being I want the accounting department to do things as smoothly as possible. And if there's some kind of timing issue that's messed up because of the accrual method or whatever method we need to use, then I don't want to mess them up. I want to try to automate the system as much as possible, let them do what they need to do, and then make periodic adjustments to have the financial statements correct at the point in time that we need the reporting of them.